Could the Minnesota Vikings have a top 10 defense this year? We think they can. Here's the top three reasons why. Number three. At number three, we have some of the influx of new talent, both young and old, that Kwesi has brought onto this defense. Obviously, most notably, Stephon Gilmore on Monday officially signed with the Minnesota Vikings. He is here. It's kind of solidifying that cornerback room. And obviously, outside of that, it is kind of a new look defense. While there are some similar pieces here, Daniel Hunter, one of the biggest stars on our defense since he was drafted in 2015, is officially gone. DJ Wanham's gone as well, who was a solid piece, went healthy. And we did replace them with two veteran players who I think are actually have a pretty big impact on this team and Jonathan Grenard coming off of his best season and Flores guy Andrew Van Ginkle who throughout his career I mean he's not going to be like top five defensive guy from pass rush perspective but he's solid he puts up a solid sack number every year and he knows the Brian Flores defense and he's just a guy that likes to get after it plus some of the guys we already have on the team like I am very excited about Harrison Smith and Stephon Gilmore being the old wise vets who still have a lot of game left in them in that defensive backfield again everyone's concerned about this defense but I think Kwesi did a solid job doing the best he could with what pieces he was given to put together a solid defense and a lot of those veteran signings do have a lot to do with that yeah and I mean another player that we can mention in that secondary because last year going into the season actually a majority of the season our top cornerbacks was Byron Murphy who's arguably the cornerback three at this point and then a Caleb Evans which in my opinion wasn't great we we went for it we gave him a shot didn't really work out but you can say we for sure have an upgrade with getting Gilmore and then Shaq Griffin healthy getting practice again this week should be good for week one for sure against the Giants and I mean those are two big players that's a huge that's an upgrade in the secondary just by itself and that doesn't even even mention the other young players that you were mentioning earlier and that's Dallas Turner for one who I think is the best defender coming into this last year's draft and I would not be surprised if he does get defensive rookie of the year obviously we've already seen him make an impact in preseason we saw him get a, a sack he only played a handful of snaps the second preseason game and then these undrafted free agents and these late round picks one LDR came in had a huge game in the first week and had a pretty a very solid game in week two of the preseason but in the first week had the bat a ball had the sack and I know there was a stat there's a stat out here they did say irresponsibly by Seth Walder is his name irresponsible preseason stat of the day fastest average pass rush to get off for defensive tackles and Levi Drake out of all the NFL players in preseason he ranks number two with 0.87 seconds. Um, what does that say? It's just preseason. I get it, but it shows you why he was he was ranked number two in all of college for the best pass rushing from that position. Obviously, D2 school, but still, getting that from a seventh round pick is huge. And that's without even talking about the undrafted free agents that we got that Quazy is just a straight boss at grabbing every single year they say it's not him but hey you get lucky once with Irv Ivan Pace and then now you just potentially have like three or four potential undrafted free agents this year I don't know I don't think it's just luck anymore speaking of those Bo Richter there's one right there already has three sacks during this preseason should have four in my opinion technically he's showing up big in the first game specifically and one uh, pretty big in the second game another guy for sure that needs to be talked about is Taki Tamani the defensive interior at positions that we absolutely need especially a big guy like like him and he's ranked number one according to pff he has the highest grade of all of the rookies defenders in preseason so far with a 91.2 and then which gets us to Rudy McLuthern who is the second highest rookie cornerback rating this preseason as well with 84.7 so what are we going to see from undrafted free agents is anybody really going to be able to step up to the same level that we saw Ivan Pace Jr. did as an undrafted free agent last year who knows but even outside that like all the acquisitions that we already mentioned I think them by itself makes this a better defense than the year before and then you mix in like the idea of like, man, if we get hit on one of these undrafted free agent gems or one of these late round picks like LDR, that by itself could make a huge impact on this defense too. Obviously, the only player that I would say we had last year that we don't have this year is Makai Blackman. Yeah, for sure. Which obviously would have been fun to see his growth in this defense. Unfortunate losing him, but I do feel like we have some pieces here now that can help kind of pick up the slack that's left by that type of an injury. But at the end of the day, all of this, you could have as much talent as you want, but if you don't have the right guy steering the ship, it does not matter. And that gets us into our number two reason why we think the Vikings could have top 10 defenses here. 
number two. At number two, of course, defensive coordinator Brian Flores coming under fire these last couple days this past week for comments made to Tua. Uh, luckily for us, we don't have any babies on our defense. We saw Flores come out and kind of, I mean, Flores did kind of come out and admit like he holds his hand standards high. That's what you need to do for football to have get the best out of your players. Obviously, you need to do it in a way that kind of brings up your players, I think. And he mentioned that he has learned from his past and things like that to become a better head coach. And I know we we saw um, both Metellus and Harrison Phillips like stand up for him and saying he's doing great. Kevin O'Connell says he has a great relationship with the players. You can see the high standards. You can see the relationship. I don't, we've never heard any players coming out and saying he's a bad coach or anything like that, but we have seen him take a mediocre defense specifically last year and put it out up to a level that we would have never imagined. I know we've, I mean, we've been trying to get a top 20 defense for years and he came in and took the same defense that Donatel had and made it better than a top 20 defense so i mean huge props to him and now i do think we're in a situation where he's coming in with even more talent and with the rest of our defense specifically the veterans having another year in his system to learn i mean absolutely and like and like you said he did kind of admit that maybe you know he had not gone about things the right way with tua well, these are all good learning lessons for a guy who let's be real here once things kind of settle he will be a head coach again sometime in the future and i think it's a good thing for him to learn an experience from and i think kind of a bigger deal about this than it is he'll figure it out and i think he'll get it all right next time he's the head coach like you mentioned the big thing for me is last year there was not a lot of hopes about this defense there was a lot of young players in the cornerback room i mean byron murphy was our most veteran guy daniel hunter you know he was still trying to fit him into a new role i mean obviously we did three four with ed donatel but obviously trying to take that and do a more blitz heavy scheme with which right. we saw daniel hunter pretty kind of excel in and i mean i just think that's that's the big thing here i mean everybody was so pumped when it was announced that brian flores was sticking around in 2024 to lead this defense and yes losing a guy like daniel hunter was huge but like we talked about in the last segment with the guys that we brought into this defense and that's the right. and that's the big thing that really clicks with me it was a full defense for brian flores to see what we already had and i think he had such a big impact on the guys that were brought into this team this offseason and that's the reason that gives me hope i mean obviously last offseason i think he had to say in the blackman draft pick and some of the things that went on there but a lot of these guys were still under contract a lot of the veteran guys whose contracts ended and we just let them walk and now this is fully brian flores defense he had a full season to see what they had and this last offseason he was able to make decisions based off what he saw last year to improve this defense. So that's what gives me a lot of hope for this defense this year is this, I feel like, is the first season he has had a full say in what this team needs to bring the defense to the next level. Now, do they have all the pieces needed to really put themselves up there as a top, top defense in this league? Probably not. They're missing some players at big time positions. Like, I'm, hopefully a couple of these young guys can at least make it serviceable, but we do need more help there. Well, yes, we have some young talent. We still need to see a little more development here, but that's the great thing about Brian Flores. I think he is going to take this defense to the next level. Now, last year, there were, again, there were some times where we saw him absolutely coach this defense up way better than it should have been. And that's what we're about to get into in reason number one, why the Vikings could have a top 10 defense. Number one. Before we get into our number one reason, make sure you hit subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. Now, do you know what, do you want to know what I don't like? I don't like how negative the fan base has gotten on this season, particularly with the defense, right? Like, there was a lot of fans after the Gilmore signing that were pumped, but there was just as right. many who just kind of had the feeling of, well, why are we doing this? This is, this is the throwaway year. Stephon Gilmore doesn't really move the needle. We're spending a lot of money on a defense. It just isn't going to be that good. Why do we think he's going to be the final piece? Look, with everything we've talked about uh, in this video so far, here's the thing we need to remember. We've both talked about it. We think from a defensive perspective, from a player's perspective, we think this is going right. to be a more complete defense than it was last year. And even last year, with what we view to be a subpar defense to what we have right now, we were still 16th in a yards allowed at what was it 333 yards per game and 13th in in touchdowns allowed at 38 all of that with what we feel is going to be a better roster i mean to think that we could move that up six spots to become a top 10 defense yeah. doesn't seem too much out of the realm of possibility like yes we lost to neil hunter but in losing to neil hunter and a guy like dj wanham i feel like you're more consistent with a jonathan grenard and an andrew van ginkle i don't know man i just i think there's a reason to be hopeful this defense is going to be better this year yeah and then like you said adding van ginkle and daniel or van ginkle and grenard and then plus Dallas Turner. And like we already mentioned, instead of going into the season with Byron Murphy and Caleb Evans as your top two cornerbacks,
next. Byron Murphy moves to number three. Caleb Evans moves to number four, and you got Gilmore and Shaq Griffin. So I think there's no question in my mind. And I would even argue that Van Ginkle and Grenard could make a bigger impact than Daniil Hunter and Wonham. Just those two. So I do think just that by itself, it says that we have a better team. Not to mention, like we've already said with Brian Flores and everybody being in his system. And like you mentioned before, like this is Brian Flores' defense. Now he has a year under his belt with a lot of the same players. Even last year when he was brand new, didn't know a lot of these players, didn't have the same level of talent, in my opinion, overall talent anyways. And he's still, like you said, 16th in yards allowed and 13th in scoring. I mean, you're getting borderline top 10 defense right there. There was parts of the year that we were top 10. Honestly, we were top 10 defense based statistically up until like those last handful of weeks when it felt like they were able to figure us out. But Second half the Bengals game. Really yeah, felt like when exactly. That, when exactly. So that's kind of when things dipped down and the season was kind of fucked up anyways. So it was like, I don't know. Who knows? Was it people figuring it out or we already know that this is kind of a lost season type of situation. But at the, the one thing we can say just for sure is that Flores took our talent from a year ago to a height nobody expected. And I think the same thing is going to happen this year with yeah. better talent. Absolutely, man. Uh, okay, I'm excited about this Vikings defense. I know you are. You guys should be too. Let us know down in the comment section if you think the Vikings could become a, a top 10 defense. Uh, let us know why and why not you think that way in the comment section. Let's like go. and subscribe, like I said. And we'll see you guys next time right here on the GG Sports Podcast. Let's go Vikes.